Yo, what's up guys? D Cell Gaming here, back with another final gear. And today I want to talk to you about account power, how to get more of it, how to break through those stages that you're having trouble with, what to focus on, what not to focus on, what kind of team should you be running, and overall just some things that I've learned along the way while trying to power my account up as much as possible. Alright guys, let's get right to it. And real quick, I just want to apologize if my voice sounds low or off. It's because I've been feeling under the weather for the last three or four days, so I do apologize about that. When I first started this Final Gear account, I had set a goal for myself, and that is I wanted to reach the top 100 in power rankings to see if I could do it. And lo and behold, I actually made it. Now with all things like this, this is fleeting, it's not going to last long, but at least I can screenshot it and say that I did. However, in doing so, in powering up my account and trying to get this goal, I learned a lot of things along the way that I want to share with you guys today. The first thing being account power means nothing. <laughs> Truly though guys, it really doesn't mean much. Uh, account power in the ranking system in this game is a total account power. It, it's it's not like an effective power, right? So even though my account power is at like 600,000, my effective power is right around 250 to 300,000 because this game only focuses on one or two teams, usually at most. There are rare circumstances that you'll use more than one or two teams. However, team one is going to be your primary carry and that's going to be really what your effective power is. Even though I broke it into the leaderboards, I guess, I'm still actually clearing the same content as before because like I said, your effective count power actually is going to be what your first team is. So really that's what you're going to want to focus on. And the leaderboards are nice, I guess, if you're into that sort of thing, it's always fun to chase. However, just keep in mind that when you're building up teams three and four, you're not really doing much for your account. So definitely focus on team one and then build your team two up. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the biggest thing right now that I see people talking about, and that is Solveig versus Eloise. Final round, fight. Which one's better? Which one should you use? Which one should you get? Etc. Etc. And my take on this is honestly, if you're free to play or even a low budget spender, you're gonna wanna use Solveig and you're gonna save your crystals for something else. I'll explain a little bit further why. I see a lot of people saying you shouldn't compare Solveig and Eloise, but you should, and this is why. Both Solveig and Eloise bring defensive mitigation to your party. What this does is allow your damage dealers to get more attacks off. They do this in slightly different ways. Solveig is gonna give you straight damage mitigation and shields that really just buff your party and last longer. While Eloise doesn't have that big flat damage mitigation, she provides her mitigation in the form of taunts. And what these taunts will allow your characters to do is attack with free reign. They will just be able to do what they want without being focused on by the enemy. So they're not going to have to worry about stuns and damage because they're going to be attacking the taunt. So in this regard, I can't really suggest with a good conscience that free to play or low budget players go for Eloise. There's going to be better units on the horizon, like Lee Angle, for example. You definitely should be saving for her. If you have the option to get Eloise, pick her up. She's fantastic and you can use her. But let's go over the pros and cons of using Solveig or Eloise. So when we look at Solveig as a character, the biggest benefit that she's going to have and the reason why I suggest her for free to play is that she's a rare character. This means you're going to be able to evolve her pretty easily to an SR. It also means she's going to have a lot of sequences that you can use so you can talent her up alongside another character, like using the Royal Invitations and farming like Elizabeth of Viarate, for example. So you're going to be able to use her and talent her, modify her, get all the skills very easily. While she doesn't have a custom mech, you can give her a shotgun and she will be able to spam her shield very, very quickly. So what makes Solvik so attractive as a unit is that she is free to play completely. She's very easy to pick up, very easy to power level, and very easy to make strong. So as a defensive support, she is great and arguably better than Eloise. Now that being said, despite what people are saying, Eloise is a defensive support just because she has offensive capabilities doesn't make her not a defensive unit. She is without a doubt a defensive 
unit. Can she provide DPS? Yes, but we'll get into that in just a minute. So what Eloise actually provides for your team is longer sustained portions of DPS. With her taunt ability, and especially once you have her custom mech, and there's a bunch of more taunts going on, it allows your striker units specifically to attack with free reign. It lets them go nuts and just do whatever they wanna do. This gives you longer windows of sustained DPS, so she pairs very well with Tasia, for example. While doing this, she also provides respectable DPS herself. She has AOE damage and her numbers are actually pretty high for a defensive support. The main problem with LOEs is you're not going to be able to level her up alongside your main DPS unless you are actually a big spender. So imagine this if you will, say you're focusing on Ren or Tasia, you're gonna have to be using your sequence cores for those to get their talents up. That means unless you're spending a lot of money, you're not going to be able to use those soul shop coins for LOEs. She's going to be sitting there at a low talent level when you could have a soul veg at a much higher talent level. This is why I suggest most players to go for soul veg. If you can afford LOEs or you just want to have a different play style, go for LOEs. There's no problem with that. So let's talk about a budget friendly or a free to play friendly team that you can build easily and one that will carry you through the game. So looking at our pilots here, the first person that I want to talk about is Viorate. Viorate is a very good free to play friendly option and a low spender option. The reason for this is she provides very high DPS, her sequences can be farmed and her custom mech parts can be farmed. So without spending anything, without using sequence cores, etc., etc., you're gonna actually be able to get her talents up all while just farming the game, provided you have a little bit of luck. And the second person that I wanna talk about is Viola. You're gonna wanna try to get a Viola or maybe even re-roll as one of the SR characters when you use that at the beginning of the game. And that is because Viola is a pretty decent healer. You're probably not gonna be able to get the best healer in the game, however, you can use Viola or even Esmeralda if you're not lucky enough to get a Viola. Admittedly, Viola is a little hard to level up and modify because she is an SR character and there's no real way to get her sequence cores. So if you're unlucky like me, like if you look at my Viola, uh, <laughs> if you look at my Viola, <laughs> yeah, she's only a four star. So I haven't really gotten many copies of her. So, you know, it is what it is. In this case, I would probably use Esmeralda as I could five star her and I could beef her talents up just a little bit and she'll do the job. The next character obviously is gonna be Solveig. Solveig is a great free to play or low spender option. She's one of the best tanks in the game. You get her completely free and while playing the game and leveling up, you're gonna get a bunch of rare sequences and Solveig is gonna be among them. If you're really unlucky, you might not get all of them, but I think I ended up with like 30 or 40 or something like that. You're gonna be able to level her up very easily. And again, this is what makes her an attractive defensive support. Now, the last two characters I want to talk about are a little split and I'm gonna go over snowy first because snowy is my recommendation you can get her free from the unlimited tin pools that you have at the beginning of the game she provides a little extra damage on top of your via rate and she can take your via rate and increase her damage by making her do or ignore defense I mean also she can randomly buff her by giving her like life steal and stuff like that Overall, Snowy is a great option. She's pretty easy as you can use saved crystals. I think it's 2,500 say uh, of the free crystals and you can get her custom mech. And then after you get the custom mech, you can use Royal Invitations to actually increase her talents if you wanna do it that way. So you can actually level her while farming for Virate. And this is one of the reasons why I suggest Snowy over my next option. My next option is actually going to be Elizabeth. So where are you, Elizabeth? So Elizabeth is fantastic as she's going to buff your team just like Snowy will and she's farmable. You can farm her sequences just like Viorate and you can farm her custom mech again just like Viorate. You don't need to spend money to get their custom suit. If you're a low spender, Elizabeth might be a little bit better of an option. However, for free to play, I do 
say go with snowy and the reason why is because you can farm for virate while using royal invitations to level up snowy and virate at the same time and also while you're doing that you can use the free sequences that you get and also keep leveling your solveg so you're gonna have three powerhouse units to carry your team along. If you go the Elizabeth option, you can't farm Elizabeth and Viorate at the same time. However, Elizabeth is available in the Royal Invitation, so if you wanna go that way, you can. I just find it a little bit of a waste to use Royal Invitations on a unit that you can farm, but that's just my opinion. So what was my biggest power boost, my biggest power jump that I got on this account? Well, that's actually going to be from augmenting my gear. Now, at first, when I went to augment my gear, it didn't seem like it was doing much. In fact, the power, the power jumps were very, very small and it didn't really seem worth it. However, if you look at my Rin, you can see she is almost 100,000 power by herself and about 25 of that is from augmenting. So what is augmenting and how does it boost your account power? So when you go to the equipment menu and you go to modify and you modify a specific piece of equipment, you're going to get to a menu that looks like this. Well, the augments are where you're going to want to go. Now, you're going to have to feed high level equipment into this to get the levels up and you're also going to need augment items which I'll go over a little further. Here's the trick. When you modify a piece of equipment from level one and you break it into level two, you get a free secondary property. So if you're saving everything correctly, you should have some scatter modules. As you can see down here on my property refinement, you can see that I got a mech attack at 10.4%, which is almost perfect roll for the attack percent. Now how I got that was limit breaking it again from one to two, and I was able to use one of these scatter modules here to re-roll it into something more attractive. I think she got um, crit chance, which she didn't really need, so I re-roll it into attack. And you can do this for every piece of equipment on them, including the chips. Once you break into that level two, you actually have a pretty significant jump into attack power. Now, in order to do this, you do need to keep in mind, you're gonna have to have a lot of the green, specifically the green augment items. So as you can see, it, the chips, it's gonna take 108 just to break it into level two. So yeah, try to get as many greens as possible because breaking your equipment from one to two is a massive boost in power. And my second largest increase in account power just across the board was actually from the Phoenix module. So when you go into the Phoenix, there are these things called tech development. These are like, it's like a talent system. And if you go into battle prep, there are some talents that specifically will boost your account power significantly. So if you look at this one here, increase mech's health, that will increase every mech that you have across the board this will give you a pretty big power jump and that is because even your damage units will be able to soak more damage and provide longer sustained dps so all of your units are going to last longer in the fight and make it easier to sustain dps now without a doubt the biggest upgrade that i got in attack power was actually arms upgrade increases a mech's attack so all of your units attacks across the board will have increased attack stat this is huge you're going to want to level this up you're going to have to focus on your phoenix um you're going to have to focus on your felix because all of these talents are gated by felix level as you can see i can't level it up until i'm level eight so i'm stuck for now as far as this goes however there are other talents to look forward to like since i have a Rin, increases health of light frames increases uh health of light cockpits and there's just so many things here increases the attack of medium mounts increases the attack of light mounts increases the attack of heavy mounts so as you can see leveling the phoenix and specifically the battle prep will actually give you a much higher effective account power now i'm not saying this is the most effective route to use as far as account progression goes but as far as account power goes if you're stuck on a stage or you can't clear something this is a good way to go ahead and start focusing on to get that boost that you need and the third big power jump that i got from my account is from the talent system so when you go into the game and you go to your pilots, you can look at your talents and you can see that's like 10 stages. So Rin specifically, 
I, I focus on Rin because I like her more than Tasia. Tasia would give me more sustained DPS and that's probably the better option to go for most people. However, I just like the RNG nature of Rin and she is a powerhouse. So that's just my personal preference. But if you look at the talents and what you're gonna get, you get a bunch of health, a bunch of attack stats, and you get a passive skill. Some units like Rin have a specific passive for this, like hers is perfective form, which makes her do two times damage with enough Sakura marks. But most people like my Solvek here, they're gonna get fanaticism, and what fanaticism actually does is increase their damage and decreases their damage that they receive from bosses. So as you can see, I'm mostly just leveling my Rin and my Solveg with my Snowy F far behind. The only reason that I have Bernadette, Flavia, and PN72 leveled up to four is because I have the battle pass and they just give you enough sequences to get that far. But what I'm doing is using all of the sequences that I got for free to level my Solveg. I'm using my, my sequence cores for Rin and then I'm using my Royal Invitations to level Snowy slowly but surely. This is actually a big boost in power and you're probably gonna wanna stop at five star and start focusing on talents. The amount of power boost that you get from talents far exceeds the initial bump that you get from going to six star. So a general rule of thumb is you're gonna wanna level your talents before you get to six star. Remember, focus on one team at a time. That's gonna be your effective count power. Team one is the most important thing that you build. Don't spread yourself way thin. If I learned anything from trying to get into the top 100 is that the vast majority of my quote unquote account power is not only necessary, it's not even effective. And some miscellaneous things, if you're interested in trying to cheaply get your account, like pad your account power, here are some things that you can do. One, if you have an R unit that you really like, so in my case, Solveg, you can actually use her, um, you can actually buy some evolution material and you can evolve her into an SR. That will actually boost you from anywhere between two or three extra thousand power. So that's a pretty good jump for her. So you can do this pretty cheaply for any R character. You're probably gonna wanna save up as much as you can. I wouldn't go crazy with this, but Solveg is a pretty safe option to go ahead and evolve. Another thing that you can do to kind of pad out your power is you can go ahead and level up your gear to level 30. Like so, level 30, level 40. I say level 30 because it doesn't take very much gold to do so, and the amount of daily gold you get will far exceed this. Anything above 30 starts to be costly, but this is a pretty good way to pad out your power if you're trying to do that. Why this is a good thing to do and kind of just level up as much equipment as possible, and also modify your pilots. Modify them to five star, all of your greens and blues, modify them to five star, modify them to six star, get them all to five and six star. And the reason why you want to do that is because the black arc will actually give you more stats to your units. So once you've filled out an entire stage of this, you actually get a bunch more stats account wide on top of free crystals. And what's interesting about this is the very bottom stat for each stage will increase all of the stats for every unit you have. So number one is increases all pilots evasion by 20. Next is all defense by 40, all technique by 45, all endurance by 100. Now this one's huge, all pilot damage by 1%. That's great. All pilot movement speed, attack rate. So as you can see, you wanna try to level up equipment, mod as many of the rares and you know the greens and the blue units as much as possible to six star so you can get as many bonuses and free crystals as possible. And another small little boost that you can do is use the marriage system to give whatever your main DPS is a 20% crit damage buff. So whoever your main carry DPS, whether it's Rin, Tasia, Violate, whoever it is, make sure put that ring on it and they will do 20% more crit damage. That's gonna wrap up today's video, guys. For everyone who's made it this far and has followed along with me, I greatly appreciate it. Consider liking and subscribing to the channel if you like these types of videos. And remember guys, this is just my opinion on things. You Don't let my opinion stop you from having fun with the game. If you like a specific unit, by all means, use them. Just remember, account power and 
progression or whatever it's not everything you definitely want to make sure that you're actually having fun with a game <laughs> because you know if you try to min max things you can really min max yourself into boredom or whatever just make sure you're having fun with the game and remember these are just my opinions and as always guys i'll see you in the next one